Good morning and welcome everyone. I'm Tom Boley, Chief Market Strategist at EarningsBeats.com. And this is Trading Places Live. It's Tuesday, March 17th, 2020. Uh, happy St. Patrick's Day to everyone. Uh, I do wanna note that we are pre-recording this show a little early today. Um, so uh, some of things could change. Some of the, uh, the fluidity of the futures and all could be changing from the time of this recording. So I just want to uh, let you know that. Um, let's go over today's schedule. Um, I want to get into our daily market recap, uh, which we always do, of course. Uh, talking technically, um, really it's not a whole lot to talk about technically because the market is so fearful right now. But I thought what we'd do there is maybe take a look back at the two most fearful periods uh, that I can recall, which was the 2008 financial crisis and then back in 1987 for that market crash. And just take a look at how the market um, struggled during those periods, but then how the recovery eventually took shape. Uh, get into, hopefully get into a few uh, weekly charts of some of the stronger scooters among the large caps. And those are some that I would maybe focus on for perhaps a recovery, just because they would provide a little bit more safety because they are large caps. Uh, we'll talk about that in just a bit. Uh, earning spotlight, not a whole lot going on there, but there was one company that uh, surprisingly came out with some pretty good numbers. We'll take a look there. Upgrades, downgrades, and then I'll finish with the three you must see. Three charts that I think are just uh, charts that you really can't not look at right now. So uh, let's get things started. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the market action from uh, uh, Monday. It was another bad Monday. And for those of you who followed my historical analysis, uh, you know that Mondays are historically the worst day of the week. I don't know how much you can, how much stock you can put in that, given what we've been seeing. But we did have a rough Monday yesterday. The Dow Jones Industrial Average down nearly 3,000 points, down 13 percent, and uh, just above 20,000. I tell you, I I can't imagine anyone, uh, you know, if they'd been willing to place a bet with me um, a couple of months ago telling me that the Dow was going to go down to 20,000. I think I would have taken that bet and given them some pretty significant odds, but we're here. Uh, the S and P 500 down 12% or 325 points. The NASDAQ down 12%, a little over that down almost a thousand points yesterday on the NASDAQ. The mid cap stocks down 14% or almost 14% small caps, 13 and a quarter. Again, Day after day, we're seeing underperformance in mid caps and small caps. I think you really have to be careful with these two groups. I and mean, we need to be careful in the entire market, but especially those two groups, for whatever reason, they, they underperform on up days and down days. It's just been a really, really uh, rough period. And you can see that in the small caps here. We were over 1,000 in the small cap index a month ago, and yesterday closed at 629. That was a, it's been a huge, huge drop in the small cap index. Real estate leading to the downside technology in the second spot, financials, energy, consumer discretionary. Those are your five groups that just did not perform uh, well, actually performed, you know, lagged on a relative basis, uh, but all 11 sectors were down. So it was not a good day anywhere in the market. And uh, you know what was really crazy about yesterday's action when we look at the Dow, and I'm just gonna show you an intraday chart here. Because the Dow Jones intraday, we gapped down and we were down over 10% at the open. And then we rallied from un just under 20,500 to 21,750. So we're talking about you know, a 6% rally in a, an hour and a half. And then a, yet another big drop from 21,750 down to the low of the day at the close, which was another 1,500 points or about six, 7%. So just in one day, think about this for a minute, the Dow was down you know, 10, 11%, early, rebound 6-7%, and right back down another 6-7%. So we're talking about in the course of one day, as much a, as a 22, 23, 24% swing. Um, that's more than we normally would see the market gain or lose in an entire year. And yet that was the movement that we had just one day yesterday. Um, volatility sent, or set a new all-time record high, uh, which is just you know, crazy when we think about how much volatility we've had at other points in our history, and especially the century with the financial crisis. But it is what it is. Uh, let's keep moving on here. Ten-year Treasury yield. Now, I put this on a, a Fibonacci to give you some idea. You know, if there's one thing, the 10-year the Treasury yield has bounced a lot more than stocks 
at least from at least stayed up for a while. Now we did move back down yesterday, but and you know you can kind of grab your peak whichever peak you want. To I literally went back to about mid February because that's when the big slide began here on the TNX. But we dropped from sixteen point five um, or you know one point six five down to zero point four in three weeks, give or take a little bit. And then over the course of last week, we saw the bounce. And this bounce got us back up close to about a 50% Fibonacci retracement before rolling back over. So I think we've now established the line in the sand to the downside. I really would like to see the 10-year Treasury yield hold. I think in order for stocks to stabilize, I think we need to see the bond market stabilize. And it was a huge drop in yields. We did get down there. We rallied for a few days. But now we are starting to roll back over again. I really want to hold that 0.4 level to the downside. All right, let's move on to talking technically. Um, you know, here what I wanted to do was just go back and take a look. First, we'll pull up where we are right now. So the S&P 500, currently you can see the drop, 3,400 down below 2,400. So we've now dropped over 1,000 points on the S&P 500, which is roughly one third. Huge drop, we can see a support level back here in 2018. Um, this was a fearful drop, not like what we're seeing now, but that was a, a fearful drop and an established low from a longer term perspective that I would really like to see hold. And with the VIX breaking out, closing above 80, I think it closed up at 83 and change yesterday. Um, you know, a support level like this could be blown away with this kind of fear building. Uh, but I would really like to see a, a reversal off of this, maybe a false breakdown and a big reversal um, at a key support level, a key higher fear support level like we saw back in 2018. I think that would be a at least a short-term sign of maybe we get a rebound. Um, that's what I would be looking for uh, there. Um, but let's move on and move back to some of the other periods um, and just take a look at what we were looking at back then. So here was 1987. This is actually the beginning of 87 through the end of 1988. Um, and one thing to note is that this is probably more similar, not in terms of the news, but in terms of the, the market environment. This is probably more similar to, to what we were experiencing in February of, you know, of this year, just a month ago, when back in 1987, you can see that the market here was at an all-time high. This was an all-time high back in August of 1987. And then we pulled back a little bit, moved back up one more time. It was really the beginning of October of 1987 where we saw this huge move down from 330 all the way down to 220, below 220. Now that drop was in, I don't know, roughly two and a half weeks. And it spanned about one third of the S&P 500. In other words, it dropped about one third. That's where we're at right now. So if you're looking back in history and wondering, okay, how does this compare to 1987? Well, actually from the high, we were down a little bit more than 33%. But from this, this drop from the beginning of October down through the uh, middle of October, that low, that was about a uh, one third drop in the S&P 500. So we're right there with uh, some of the biggest moves in history. Now, I'm not going back to 1929, but in terms of history during my lifetime, uh, you know, we're right about there in terms of the severity of the decline. Now, in 1987 and into 1988, once we established a bottom, a fearful bottom, you can see we went back down, we tested it, but that held. So what we want to try to do, first of all, is establish that bottom. And part of the problem with trying to establish that bottom is that the market's not rational. Um, it wasn't rational then, but it had to come to some kind of an irrational bottom before it, you know, rationality could begin to take over again. You know, right now what we've got, and you know, some of the problems, and this certainly isn't all of them, but obviously the coronavirus is the problem. And our reaction to it, or maybe you know, for a while, maybe not a re reacting as quickly as maybe we could have. I mean, uh, you know, we could argue back and forth as to whether we did things. We did some things really well, some things maybe not so well. You know, we're, are we prepared? I don't know. That's a debate for someone else. But the point is that the coronavirus is spreading. We're taking drastic steps throughout the United States and around the world to try to slow that spread. 
Um, and so the problem is there's no history we can point to to say, okay, this is how this is going to work over the next six months. So everyone is trying to kind of guess, you know, is, is this going to work? If it does work, how long is it going to take? And if it, even if it works and it, and it takes three months, six months, one month, whatever it is, what's the recovery going to look like? When are people going to feel comfortable enough? When's because consumer confidence is going to tumble. When, when's the, the consumer ready to step back out and start spending money? Because this is going to have economic consequences. It's not just the virus. Then we've got to deal with companies that are laying off because they've gone through a really rough period for three to six months. Um, and that's maybe best case. I, I would take that right now. If somebody said, hey, we're going to have a really deep recession for the next two quarters, um, you know, really negative GDP, but then we're going to bounce back. I would take that right now. But part of the problem is the market doesn't know. And uncertainty is what drives fear and on Wall Street. Um, but what will this massive interruption to business, what's this going to do to earnings? Obviously, it's going to have a major impact. I mean, you've got companies like Apple closing their stores, Nike closing stores, Starbucks not allowing customers to sit in their cafes to drink their coffee. You know, less, fewer people are going in to, to places like this. What impact is that going to have? It's really hard. I, I don't have any answers, and I think everyone's kind of guessing at this point. We don't have enough information. Um, how, how quickly will we, we recover economically? Who knows? You know, we've got multiple industries that are being severely impacted, not just temporarily impacted, but, you know, when you look at the recreational services group, which includes cruise lines, you look at the airlines, you look at travel and tourism, restaurants and bars, many restaurants and bars are being ordered to close. That's going to have impacts that I, you know, I don't know that I've ever seen before. So, you know, home construction, another area that has just completely fallen out of bed. Um, and I'm sure it's because of economic concerns, the fallout from this. But again, how bad is going to be? Those are all the problems that everybody's trying to wrestle with. And while they're wrestling with it, they're just selling. They're not, they don't know the answer, so they're selling. Um, you've got tumbling crude prices. Obviously, that, that's weighing significantly on energy companies, um, not to mention the lack of demand. Then you've got uh, plummeting treasury yields. They're hurting banks, life insurance companies, investment companies. So it's all of this uncertainty that is simply driving the VIX, the equity only put call ratio and everything through the roof. I mean, this is about as fearful as it gets. And so again, I'm looking at, this is 2008, or excuse me, this is currently, this is 2020. This was 2000, uh, or excuse me, 1987. And then this is 2008. So 2008, we were already in a bear market. There was already fear. We had already dropped quite a bit. Um, when this all started in October, the big drop in October of uh, 2008, we were already down, I don't know, maybe 20% uh, on the S&P 500 before we ever started this decline. So it was a little bit different in that there was already, you know, we were already in the middle of a pretty big bear market, rather severe bear market, and that just added to it. 1987 is more like where we are now, where we're going into it, everything was fine, bull market, all-time highs, and then literally in three weeks, 33% of the market uh, capitalization gone on the S&P 500. That, outside of 1987 and maybe going back all the way to 1929, really has been somewhat unprecedented. But that's what we have facing us, and that's the part of the problem here. Now, prices are on sale. Which prices are on sale? That's hard to say. Um, one of the things that I would at least encourage everyone to look at is just the simple fact that maybe some of these smaller companies are going to be, it's going to be much more difficult for them to get going. Um, and so I'm just going to pull up a chart. Um, let me go back to that current chart here. And I'm just going to type in the uh, SML, which is... Um, the S&P 600 small cap index divided by the S&P 500. So it's small caps divided by large caps. And let's get this in a index. Um, and I'll give you, you know, let's go way back. We've got a line chart. So here, this is what we were looking at. The small caps tend to outperform large caps, but about 20 months ago, 21 months ago, it started with a decline. And this has just exacerbated it. It just really picked up steam. And so, you know, I'm looking across and now I've seen this drop all the way back to the 2008 
beginning of 2008 relative low. Um, if that drops, you know, we'd be looking all the way back 16 years to where we've seen small caps underperforming on such a wide basis. So this is a group, I think eventually this could be a great group. You know, you might look at this and say, well, let me just jump into the small caps. I think that that is the area that's going to be most impacted. I mean, small companies, if we take a big hit you know, on our economy over six months, it's going to be the smaller companies, I believe, that are going to have the biggest problems. Um, and so, you know, unless, you know, the government's going to step in, that's the other side of it, you know, where I'm talking about a lot of the negatives, there are going to be a lot of positives. The government's going to throw everything at it. The Federal Reserve's going to throw everything at it. Global central, ba central bankers are going to throw everything at this. So, you know, if you're on the short side, it's been a great ride in the near term, but, you know, there's going to be a point where the market is going to react to a lot of positive stimulus. We're, we haven't reached that point yet. We haven't gotten to where I think investors can see the light at the end of the tunnel. And so they're still fearful for where that light is going to come at. You know, when are we going to finally see that light? And that's uh, part of the problem right now. All right, um, let's keep moving on. I'm going to go into a few weekly charts. So this, I just want to give you a long-term perspective in this particular segment of some companies that you probably know, some you might not, but I'm just going to go through them rather quickly, just a handful of them, to give you an idea of companies that, these are high scooters. So this doesn't mean necessarily that these companies have been going higher. They probably haven't. Scooters are looking at relative strength. Scooters, you don't get a, a high scooter score, which is stock charts technical rank. You don't get a high scooter score because you're going higher. You get a high scooter score because you're outperforming your peers. So if your peers are going down faster than you, you can be going down, but if you're going down at a slower rate, then that will help you get a higher scooter score. It's a, really a relative strength type of a, a reading and a score. And I would say that you know, it's mostly concentrated on how a stock has done over the last five or six months. That's, you know, if you get much before that, um, you know, you might find some stocks that have really good high scooter scores, but their long-term charts, weeks, you know, going back several years is not, very, is not very good, but their last six months has been really strong. That tends to get you a really good scooter score. So that's why I wanted to pull up these long-term charts to, to give you a sense of some of these high scooter companies and what they look like on a long-term basis. I think just about everybody is familiar with Apple. Uh, Apple's a wonderful company, um, seems to know how to make money. Uh, they seem to know how to come up with products that everyone needs you know, timely. They do it better than anyone else in terms of cost, you know, containing costs and so forth. So it's just a great company. So if I'm thinking about at some point seeing a bottom and being comfortable getting into a stock, I think Apple is one of those. Can it go down? Of course it can go down. Any stock can go down. Uh, I'm just talking about in terms of relative comfort, in, in my opinion. You've got a company like Apple that looks pretty good. Uh, some others, Amazon. You know, and again, we're looking at weekly charts, and what we're seeing here, it's bad, but it's not you know, one-third bad, or it's not 80% bad, which we've seen in some companies. Um, you know, it's, it's bad but it's manageable. And so, you know, some of these companies, if I was getting back in, I'd want to stick with some companies maybe that look, uh, you know, a little bit stronger. Um, now I'm going to throw, you know, some other charts up here. I mean, Facebook's taking a pretty big hit here. It's got support from 2018 down around 120. So if we see the market look like, you know, it's had a massive reversal. What I'm looking for, you know, I would love to see a day when the Dow is down 2,000 intraday and it finishes up 2,000. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, a real capitulatory, everybody says I'm done with the stock market, and then you get a massive rally in the last two hours, completely changing the look of that day with a VIX that hit 90, or maybe it hits 100, I don't know. 90 is the all-time high. But that's the kind of capitulation day. I'd be looking back at companies like Facebook that do have a long-term track record, um, probably are not going to go away, and will recover you know, from this. Um, another one, maybe Google, you know, and I'm, I'm pulling up some pretty, you know, familiar names, but I think these are the kinds of names again, with the fear levels, the way they are, if I have to take positions in stocks, these are some of the names that I'd be thinking about. Um, 
and you know these are highly concentrated a lot of them are technology stocks and so forth so you got to be careful about you know putting all your eggs in one basket but um, again i'm just trying to throw out some names google i think long term watch that december 2018 low as well getting down close to that um netflix um you know consumers aren't going to stop the streaming um they're not going to uh, i don't know how quickly they're going to come back and go to movie theaters you know once we get the virus behind us, that main panic and scare behind us. When do people start going back and what does that look like? I don't know. But Netflix, you can watch movies at home. And so this company has been hit, hasn't been hit as hard as some others, but it's been hit and it's been consolidating for a while. Look at that December low again down there around the 225, 230 area. That would be a level to keep an eye on if uh, we really see additional panic. Um, Microsoft. I mean, you got to throw Mr. Softy in there. Microsoft been a great performer. Yes, it's been hit hard, but it's been hit hard in the past. Before, you know, before if we go back, um, and I, maybe I should have gone 15 years back, so you could have seen that 2008 decline. But Microsoft went from 28 down to 12. I mean, it lost 60%. Um, and you can see it rallied back. It was one of the first stocks to come roaring back. I suspect that will be the case again. Does Microsoft lose? Another thirty dollars first in a panicked market. Hey, anything's possible, you know. I mean, over the last week, it's lost twenty-three dollars. Another twenty-three dollars, we're almost there. So anything can happen in a in a real fearful market. Uh, let me just do uh, one, maybe one more here. Um, looking for something maybe just a little different. Well, look at a here's a good, really nice looking long-term healthcare stock, biotech. Vertex Pharmaceutical, uh, you can see back in 2008, it struggled, but it bounced back um, and did pretty well. I mean, this would be maybe something in a different area of the market that has shown, you know, pretty good long-term track record. Uh, it can be volatile at times, but also it, it, you know, because it is a pharmaceutical biotech, um, you know, it might weather this particular storm a little bit better than some others. I think it has been uh, to date. So, you know, this is a stock like this would be one to consider. But I would, you know, in, in trying to gain some perspective, I would be looking back at some long-term charts. You can't find any daily charts that look good right now. And very few, you can even find support if you're looking at a one day or a, a one year daily chart, um, because some of them have dropped so far, you can't even see support on the, on the chart. Um, so I think it's really helpful to go back and look long-term uh, before making any uh, decisions. All right, earnings spotlight. I really just want to show you a, a one, one chart here in particular, which is Coupa Software. And they came out, they beat their revenues. They uh, beat their earnings per share, 21 cents versus 5 cents. They guided their revenues higher, and, but they did lower their fiscal year 21 earnings per share. And I'll, we'll pull up the numbers or we'll pull up the uh, real time in just a minute. But this is a stock that's been absolutely crushed. And it's a smaller company. Um, well, I shouldn't say it's smaller, smaller than what we were just looking at. Um, I don't know exactly how large the company is, but it's definitely a lot smaller than what we were just looking at, the companies we were just talking about. Uh, but this is a company that was up near 180 and just went down below 100. So you can see how some of the smaller companies have really been hit. Now, you'll probably get reactions to the upside on many of these companies. I'm going to take a look, give you a quick update on the real time in the pre-market. Yeah, it's getting a nice response up 7%. But will it last? That's a really good question, and a question I don't really have an answer for, to be honest. Uh, but it is up about seven bucks, one seventeen. So it's going to open right in here, still within this downtrend. Where it goes from one seventeen, I have no idea. I think it's probably going to struggle to get through about one twenty-five if it can get up there. And then we know we've got these lows marked down around the one hundred to one hundred five area. So it's, and that's another problem with trading individual stocks right now. The trading ranges are huge. So, you know, you, you get into a stock and you don't know, you know, if it starts to move higher, you don't know if you should take really quick profits and then just get back out. If it starts moving against you, do you panic? You know, because you have so much room to the downside. I mean, if you get into this stock on earnings at 117 and you're looking down at the low just three days ago at 99, that's a lot of room to the downside, a lot of risk to take on a stock. And that's what makes trading individual stocks in this market so tough. Uh, upgrades, downgrades, I'm just going to give you, uh, I mean, there's a bunch of them on both sides of the ledger. Uh, I'm going to go into JD, which was upgraded today. This is JD.com. 
had a really good report. This stock was at a high in early March. Pretty amazing. Um, it has been hit here recently. Yesterday got hit 11%. Big uh, high wave candle. A lot of indecision going on here with traders not really knowing what to do. Um, yeah, I'd be a little careful, I think, with, uh, with JD. But it is being upgraded. I would, I would say it's got a shot maybe to get back up into the upper 30s and close to those moving averages from there. I'd be a little more careful. And then uh, the last one I'll give you is a downgrade. And this is not going to be a huge surprise. But remember, I told you how companies have just fallen off the chart. You can't find support. If you look back the last year, look at Norwegian Cruise Lines. I mean, and this is what this is going to be the aftermath of what the government's going to have to, you know, pick up the pieces. We had a lot of failing industries back in 2008, starting with the banks and all that impacted. Well, we're going to have a very similar situation with a lot of different industry groups. Cruise lines, you know, recreational services is going to be one of them. So you look at this, and if you're if you're getting into this stock, it's being downgraded. My gosh, the stock's gone from 60 to 10, but. The market's saying, hey, this one you know, may need a lifeboat. Uh, this is not, uh, you know, when a stock loses 80% of its value in a month, that makes me worry a little bit. All right, let's move on and wrap up the show with uh, three you must see. I'm just going to throw, throw uh, three charts up there, and these are similar to what I showed yesterday over at Earnings Beats. But for those of you that weren't there, let me just pull up the uh, S&P 500, and I'm going to pull it up on a longer-term chart. Again, to try and smooth this out. Yes, it's been horrible for the last couple of months, uh, February and March, especially so far in March. But it was horrible back in 2008. We found a bottom. We've, we recovered off of it. I suspect we'll do the same thing. But the question is, how far do we go first? So again, keep the big picture in mind here. I think it's really important. Next up, uh, I just wanted to pull up the VIX. And just remind everybody that yesterday's close, 82.69, that was the highest close in our history, or at least in the history of the VIX. Now, was 1987 higher? I don't know. We didn't have the VIX readings back then. But I'm sure it would have been pretty rough uh, back in 87 as well. Um, this one, because it's been lingering so long, maybe this is, is a little bit worse. It's, it's kind of like it was back in 87. It's just kind of slowly picked up pace. But anyway, I think the VIX is one thing that we have to kind of keep an eye on. Um, and it should give us some comfort in that it's, it's trying to set a panicked low. But when is that low going to hit? And then finally, the equity-only put-call ratio. And what I have here on this chart is a five-day simple moving average, which is at 1.03 right now. And I'm going to stretch this chart out. I want to show you historically what this looks like. Um, so we're going to go back over the last uh, you know, 20 years throughout this century. And so again, this is the five-day moving average. So it's not just yesterday. It's the five-day moving average. We're at 1.03. And you can see that the only other time that we have been above one in our history has been in 2008. Early in 2008, we saw it just above one. And then again, in the fourth quarter, when I was showing you, um, uh, you know, the big market decline uh, with the financial collapse, that was the other time that we saw the five-day equity-only put-call ratio top one. So we are in an area that is really uncharted with the, with the CPCE, the five-day moving average now moving up to the highest level ever, and the VIX yesterday closing at 83, which is our first close that high. Yeah, I can't tell you when the bottom is in, but I can tell you that these crazy, fearful readings mark bottoms. Um, do we know if the VIX is going to go to... to you know, 100, 120? I don't know. I think, uh, you know, the market is certainly telling us that it's possible based on the way we've been trading. Um, is the equity only put call ratio going to have a five day reading of 1.1, 1.2? You know, it's possible. But the point is here that we're very fearful, extremely fearful, and that tends to mark our bottoms. Okay, I want to go ahead and uh, wrap up. I do appreciate everybody stopping by. I wish everybody uh, happy trading today. I hope things turn around. And uh, let's get this bottom in. I'd love to see it. I know you would as well. I'll be back next uh, Tuesday for Trading Places Live here. Take care, everybody. 